read up also. Henry and Mudge, the first book, by Cynthia Ryland. Henry and Mudge, the first book of their adventures. Henry. Henry had no brothers and sisters. I want a brother, he told his parents. Sorry, they said. Henry had no friends on this street. I want to live on a different street, he told his parents. Sorry, they said. Henry had no pens, pets at home. I want to have a dog, he told his parents. Sorry, they almost said. But first they looked at their house with no brothers and sisters. Then they looked at their street with no children. Then they looked at Henry's face. Then they looked at each other. Okay, they said. I want to hug you, Henry told his parents. And he did. Much. Henry searched for a dog. Not just any dog, said Henry. Not a short one. Not a curly one, he said. And no pointed ears. Then he found Mudge. Mudge had floppy ears, not pointed. And Mudge had straight fur, not curly. But Mudge was short. Because he's a puppy, Henry said. He'll grow. And did he ever. He grew out of his puppy cage. He grew out of his dog cage. He grew out of seven collars in a row. And when he finally stopped growing, he weighed 180 pounds. He stood three feet tall. And he drooled. I'm glad you're not short, Henry said. And Mudge licked him, then sat on him. Henry. Henry used to walk to school alone. When he walked, he used to worry about tornadoes, ghosts, biting dogs, and bullies. He walked as fast as he could. He looked straight ahead. He never looked back. But now he walked to school with Mudge. And now when he walked, he thought about vanilla ice cream, rain, rocks, and good dreams. He walked to school, but not too fast. He walked to school, and sometimes backward. He walked to school, and patted Mudge's big head, happy. Mudge. Mudge loved Henry's room. He loved the dirty socks. He loved the stuffed bear. He loved the fish tank but he mostly loved Henry's bed. Because in Henry's bed was Henry. Mudge loved to climb in with Henry. He loved to smell him. He loved his smell. He loved, he smelled his lemon hair. He smelled his milky mouth. He smelled his soapy ears. He smelled his chocolate fingers. Then he put his head by Henry's head. He looked at fish tank, he looked at the bear, he looked at Henry, he licked him, and he fell asleep. Mudge. One day, Mudge took a walk without Henry. The sun was shining, the birds were flying, the grass smelled sweet. Mudge couldn't wait for Henry, so he left. He went down the road, sniffing the bushes, then down another road, kicking up dust, he went through a field, across a stream, into some pine trees. And when he came out on the other side, he was lost. Oh no. He couldn't smell Henry. He couldn't smell his front porch. He couldn't smell the street he lived on. Mudge looked all around and didn't see anything or anyone he knew. He whined a little, alone without Henry. Then he lay down, alone without Henry. He missed Henry's bed. Henry. Henry thought about Mudge. Henry thought Mudge would be with him always. He thought Mudge made everything safe. He thought Mudge would never go away. And when Mudge did go away, when Henry called and called, but Mudge didn't come. Henry's heart hurt and he cried for an hour. But when he finished crying, Henry said, Mudge loves me.
He wouldn't leave. He must be lost. So Henry walked and walked, and he called and called, and he looked and looked for his dog Mudge. He walked down one road, then down another road. The sun shone as Henry ran through a field, calling and calling. The birds flew past as he stood beside a stream, calling and calling. And the tears fell again as he looked at the empty pine trees for his lost dog. Mudge, he called one last time. And Mudge woke up from his lonely sleep, then came running. Henry and Mudge. Every day when Henry woke up, he saw Mudge, big head. Every day when Mudge woke up, he saw Henry's small face. They ate breakfast at the same time. They ate supper at the same time. And when Henry was at school, Mudge just lay around and waited. Mudge never went for a walk without Henry again. And Henry never worried that Mudge would leave. Because sometimes in their dreams, they saw long silent roads, big wide fields, deep streams, and pine trees. In those dreams, Mudge was alone and Henry was alone. So when Mudge woke up and knew Henry was with him, he remembered the dream and stayed closer. And when Henry woke up and knew Mudge was with him, he remembered the dream and the looking and the calling and the fear, and he knew he would never lose Mudge again. The end.